In this video, I'm going to talk about prototypes in JavaScript and how we can use them to share functionality between objects. So I'm going to make a player object as if I was making a JavaScript game. And if you're unfamiliar with this, then check the description. I'll put a link to a video I have on this. But this player object is just a basic object. It's kind of a template for any other player object. It has a score, a name, and this say hello method that just console logs out the name and the score. And I'm going to use this object to create two different player objects. I'll just call it P1. I'm going to use object.create to do this and p2 object.create player and if we look at what p1 and p2 are so i'm just going to console log these out and run this file here we can see that they're just empty objects they're plain empty objects no methods no properties or anything but i created them in this weird way using object.create and i'll talk about exactly what that does in a little bit but right now we're just observing these are empty objects. So what will happen if I try to call uh, say hello on P1 or P2, for example? We know they don't have say hello methods because they're both empty objects. But if I run this code, we can see that they both console log out the name and the score from the player object. They are running the say hello method as if they are player objects even though they are both empty objects. And this is because when we create a new object using object.create, it creates a new empty object, but sets that object's prototype to be whatever object we pass in to this function. So P1 is an empty object, but P1's prototype is the player object. And when we try to access a property in JavaScript, in this case, the say hello method, first JavaScript will check to see if P1 has that property and it's an empty object, so it doesn't. So then JavaScript moves to its prototype, which is the player object, and it checks to see if that object has the method. And in this case, player does have a say hello method. So this is the method that ends up getting executed. And this is kind of interesting that we can access properties on objects even when that object doesn't have the property, as long as its prototype has that property. And we can look at an object's prototype using the double underscore proto double underscore property. So this is how you access an object's prototype. Uh, so if I console log this out, and I'm also gonna console log P1 just for reference. So we should get out the P1 object and P1's prototype. Uh, so let's run this. I should save it first. And I can see that the first thing that gets logged out is P1, that is an empty object. And P1's prototype is this player object that has a score three, the name and the say hello method. But if we want to access an object's prototype, we shouldn't use this property. Instead, we should use object.getprototypeof and pass in the object this way. And this will do the same thing, but it's the preferred way of doing things. And I could even just put in a triple equals here for the player object so that we can see that the P1's prototype is the player object. So there's no copy behavior going on here. The say hello method, the name property, the score property, these all just exist on a single object, on the single player object. But I can create as many players as I want. Right now I have two, but I could have a hundred or a thousand or a million as long as they can all be stored in memory. I can create as many as I want. But all of these properties will only exist once. This say hello method, even though I was calling it twice on two different objects, that method only existed in one place. So I can define properties and create behavior like this on a single object, but then share that with as many objects as I want. All I have to do is link one object to another object as that object's prototype. And I can do that using the object.create function. I'm gonna comment all of this code out for a second to show you that prototypes actually exist everywhere in JavaScript. So if I create a new uh, array, for example, so with a couple of numbers in it. And when I want to use this array, I know I have access to some of those methods like for each to loop over the array or map to loop over and create a new array. And every array has access to these methods, but these methods don't actually exist on the array. And I can console log the array's keys out by using object.getOwn 
property names. This is a way of just getting all of the property names of the current object. So we can see what actually exists on the array itself if I log this out. And the array currently has keys zero, one, and two because I have three items in it and I'm able to access that with zero, one, and two. Um, and it also has the length property so I could say array.length to see how many items are in the array. But there are no for each or map or reduce functions that we know we can access on an array because those don't exist on the array itself. They exist on the array's prototype. So if I grab the prototype of the array using object.get uh, prototype prototype of array and then do the exact same thing but pass in the prototype we'll be able to see all of the properties that exist on the array's prototype object which is the object the array is linked to so when we try and access a property on an array and it doesn't exist on that array it will try and access it on the array's prototype object and I can see right here here is a list of all the methods that don't exist on the array object itself but exist on the array's prototype object. So if I create a, a thousand arrays in my application, they won't have these properties. These methods like for each won't get copied to each array. The for each method will only exist once in my entire application, and that is on a single object. And every time I create a new array, that object's prototype will be this object that contains for each and map and filter. So instead of copying these all over the place and creating duplicates of all these things, they just exist in this single location. And in JavaScript, we link up these objects in this prototype way. And that's one way of sharing functionality between objects. So I'm gonna go back to my original player example here. And I'll run this code again. So we can see that the player objects are still empty objects, uh, but their prototype is the player object. And this means that anytime I call something like p1 uh, say hello, it's gonna use those uh, values that exist in the player object. So its score is gonna be three and its name is gonna be some player name. But let's update the name now. Let's say that player one's name is waffles and player two's name is pancakes, player names. Now, if I call p1 say hello and p2 say hello, it's gonna console log the name of the player, but is that gonna log out the name of this player object? Or did we update this player object's name to be waffles and then pancakes, so we'll get pancakes logged out twice? Or did this actually set a name property on these individual player objects and we'll actually see waffles and pancakes both logged out, which is probably what we want. So let's run this code. And we can see that the first time, hello, my name is waffles. And the second time, hello, my name is pancakes. So when I set the name property on these different players, it didn't update this player object that is being used as the prototype, otherwise they would have had the same name. So what I'm gonna do is log out both the P1 and P2 objects here so we can see what's going on. I can see that the player one object is not an empty object anymore. It has a name property that is equal to waffles and player two also has a name property equal to pancakes. When we access a property on an object, JavaScript will first look at that object and if the property doesn't exist, it will then look at the prototype and see if that property exists on the prototype. But when we assign a value to a property, it will just assign that value directly to the object. So when I assign P1 the name waffles, it just assigns that directly to P1. Now, when I call P1.sayHello, say hello doesn't exist on P1, so it goes up to P1's prototype, which is player, and it invokes this say hello method. But inside the say hello method, I'm accessing this.name. But this inside of the method will evaluate to whatever object the method was called on. So it will look at P1's name. And P1 does have a name, its name is Waffles. So this will say, hello, my name is Waffles. Then it says my score is this.score. And again, this is gonna be the P1 object, in this case on line 20, because I'm executing it on the P1 object. So it checks, does there exist a score property on the P1 object? No, there doesn't. Okay, so let's use the score property from the player object. And this is always how property lookup will work on the objects. So I'm gonna make another method here. I'm gonna call it uh, increase score. And when this method is called, I'm just going to increment the score value by one. So you increase the score, you get another point. I'm just gonna focus on the player one object now for a moment. And I'm gonna set the player one's name to be waffles. Then I'm gonna say p1.increase score. 
and then p1 say hello. So when I run this code now, we should see that the score is four. But think about this, was the score property on the player object incremented by one? Or does P1 now have a score property that is equal to four? And we can look at these objects. Let's look at P1 and P2 again to see what's going on. And we can see that the player one object is not an empty object. It has a property called name, which is equal to the value waffles. And it has a property score that is equal to four. Whereas the P2 object is still an empty object because I haven't manipulated it in any way. So when we look at this increase score method, this is the equivalent of typing uh, this dot score equals this dot score, come on, there we go, plus one. And when this method is called, this will evaluate to the P1 object. So when we do this assignment, the right side is gonna get evaluated first. So we check to see if there is a score on P1. There isn't, so it checks player, the score is three, so this will evaluate to three plus one, this will evaluate to four. Then when we go to assign the score, this is still gonna be P1. So we're going to create a new property on P1 that is equal to four. And this way the player's default score won't get modified. We will just create a new property on P1 that has that value. And if I call increase score twice here, we should see that the score is now five on waffles. And if I ask P2 to say hello, it should have a score of three still because it's using that default value. Now, prototypes aren't limited to just two objects. So I have P1 and P1's prototype is the player object. But if I take P1, I'm able to call to string, which is a method on this object. And if I console log this out, I'll see this dumb object object string printed out, which has no value here but I'm able to call this toString method, which creates this object object string. And toString doesn't exist on P1, P1 is an empty object. It doesn't exist on the player object. It exists on the player objects prototype because these prototypes can basically be chained where we can keep checking through different objects until we find the method we need. And if a method doesn't exist, we'll just end up getting null. So if I tried accessing uh, just this, which doesn't exist anywhere. It'll get to the end of the prototype chain and it's actually undefined, not null. But where does this to string method exist? If we check the object dot get own property names of object get prototype of the player object. Wow, that is a long line of code. But basically, if we check the property names of the player's prototype object, we'll see these properties right here, and there is two string. And anytime we create an object in JavaScript like this, it will end up having this default prototype object, meaning any object in JavaScript can have access to these properties. So if I were to just create an object out of thin air here, it would still have access to those properties because its prototype would be that default prototype object that exists in JavaScript. And I could increase this chain even more by creating uh, another player that is created from the P1 object. So if I tried accessing anything on P3, it would check P3, then it would check P1, then it would check the player object, then it would check the default object prototype object. And we can create as long of a chain as we want here. And this can be really handy because we get to define our behavior just once on a single object, like the say hello method, like the increase score method, like the two string method. And although that only exists in one single place, many objects can use it without it ever having to be copied.